we are headed to Torres del Paine. Today we have a special treat. We're going to the Cueva de Maladon, the prehistoric giant. What do you call it? Sloth bear? It like, looks like a sloth. This they thing. call it a melodone. Melodone. And this cave is supposed to be huge. Where they live, bones and all. Can't wait to see this thing. All right, we got here in the tour buses, beat us here. We thought it opened at nine. It actually opened at eight, but all is good. This is a cool place. Back in 1895, a German settler went into one of these giant caves we're gonna show you and found some skin of an unknown animal. Years later, that thing was determined to be the Milodon. So one of those guys, actually lived here. Let's go see his house. So they're telling us about the indigenous people that used to live here. So 500 years ago, in our last episode, we told you about how this group of people became extinct in a very horrible way. But they lived out here 500 years ago. So this area was home to four or five different species of prehistoric mammals that no longer walk the planet. But one this, of them lived in this giant hole. One of them lived in this giant hole. And this whole experience so far has given us a look into not only what kind of prehistoric animals lived here, but also the people and how they interacted with them and that type of stuff but this is a little information sign about the formation of the cave so back when they had glaciers and wind it kind of carved it out but many remains have been found in this including that of the Milodon. The, Milodon. the sprinkles are back but it's okay because I think we're almost to the cave so, no rain inside the cave, I don't think. They're getting bouncing along. Oh, there he is. Wow. Look at this. This cueva is immense. Just imagine walking through here with a thread of saber-toothed tigers and mylodons roaming around. Wow. All right, Snow has decided she's brave enough to go in. She sort of stopped and paused. But this cave, look at this, guys. I always love these. So as we drove in, we drove through past this Diablo structure, Sila del Diablo. But you can see the trail lines here. And here is the big cave that we just entered into. There it looks like there's a mirador. And along the trail, there's a couple smaller caves. So we'll see if we can go find those for you guys as well. All right, I'm going in. <laughs> thing is huge. In eighteen ninety four some fur and skeletons of the Mylodons were actually found in this cave. 
and they've been studied extensively and now some of the remains are even on tour throughout the world so I'm not sure that we're going to get to see them here we did see a little hair and some teeth I think and some bones in the museum in the last episode but this cave was definitely used by prehistoric beings And as we look around the edge of the cave, there's even smaller caves that go around back even further. Kurt is right there, walking up the stairs. <laughs> I'm still standing here in the middle of this cave. We're going to try to show you how big it is. Who knows if it's going to work. All right, not sure if that little blue dot there is going to show up, but that is definitely snow. Let's see if we can zoom in here. There she is, waving. Look at how big this cave is, guys. Wow. So the early inhabitants of this cave, they made stone tools. You can see the knife, the projectile point, like an arrowhead. And uh, we saw some of those tools back over in the museum yesterday. So this cave is 200 meters deep, all the way back to the back. It's 80 meters wide and 30 meters high. And all these little divots you see throughout here are where remains have been excavated a long, long, long time ago and sold. So this cave has many different cool features, including stalactites, which are up on top there. And that happens from water dripping down through the rocks like we saw over there. <laughs> and those slowly form over time. But the cave is made of sandstone and sort of conglomerated rock, sedimentary rock. And uh, yeah, it was carved out by waves a long time ago. Again, the prehistoric history of this is what's so fascinating to me. You're gonna do the next step of the hike? Yeah. I'm gonna head back to the van. Those stairs were enough for me. So we're at the mouth of the cave, but that was a pretty cool experience. All right guys, say goodbye to snow for now. <laughs> This is the point where we split up. She's going to head back to the van. Do you have a key? I have a key. And I'm going to go on and search you. There's a couple more caves, so let's go on and see if we can see those. Who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky and see a Mylodon. And as we stroll out of the cave, oh, look, there's a little bit of rainbow over there. I hope you guys can see that. And the sun is peeking out from behind us in the clouds giving us a beautiful look over there where we have a surprise authentic treat for lunch today you guys are going to be i hope we and you guys are going to be blown away by this experience well i made it back to the van just in time the rain is picking up but kurt has a raincoat and i know he wanted to take y'all to at least one more part of this cool place such cool history here all right Back to Kurt, who's out there dodging the rain. <laughs> and you can see off in the distance, the Cielo de, del Diablo. I showed you that giant pile of what looks like boulders over there. All seriousness, the Mylodons and the saber-toothed tigers are extinct. They no longer roam this planet, but the puma still exists and thrives here in the Patagonia. So, definitely be on the lookout for anything big and wild. All these shrubs are spiny and thorny, but they also look like little bonsai trees. We're drawing closer to this big rock formation over here. I'm kind of thinking this might be taking us up into the medium cave. Yeah, they definitely found some horse teeth. Some Milodon claw was found here. And so, they've done some excavation here and found some cool stuff. But I do see the medium cave up there, so let's go. Looks like we can 
kind of walk along the edge here. Oh, and look at this. Look at this, guys. They call this a medium cave. It's a really big cave. It's not nearly as big as the other one, but still. And this one goes way back in here. And there's clearly no one else here. It's kind of quiet and eerie as we come up in here. Look at this, guys. Nothing like a little spelunking first thing in the morning. Ah, oh, always love exploring click caves, cuevas. I like boulders. I am going to go to the Sila del Diablo, 530 meters. Now, I'm going to be cutting it close, and I should let you guys know that my ankle is still a little bit banged up from, well, it's been a while now. But it is sore and sensitive. But if I need to, I can trot back, jog back a little bit, but it will come with some pain. And here it is. This is the devil's chair. So Siela, Sila, Silla is a chair. So this is the chair of the devil. And you can kind of see why it's named as such. So let's see if we can take a closer look and see if we can see the chair. All right, you can see the visitor center back over there. Similar. Similar. Similar a los siames. Uh, Bermana. Bermana. Okay. That's where I got to get in 15 minutes. But let me scamper up this thing a little more. All right, we can't make it to the top of the rock. We're almost there. We're up here on this little high point right here. And I'll let you look so you can see it is in fact straight down cool place it started to rain again so I got to get the camera put away slide down this hill and well I got to take off 1600 meters 15 minutes let's do this guys hi and they're waiting on me I'm sorry guys I jogged a lot of it how are you doing Pepe Lobo. Oh, hey Lobo, what's up, buddy? And Jorge. Jorge, oh, that's right, you told me yesterday. Nice to meet you, Jorge. Nice to meet you. Everybody's already seen the kitties. The van. Love the kitties. No, we haven't been in the van yet. All right, after a quick introduction to Jorge and the two dogs. We're following Gabby and her husband, Snow's White Knuckling It, and we are headed to an authentic lunch at a private farm. So really excited about this. We've been driving through uh, all this agriculture land, and now we get a closer look. Estancia Turistica Parales. We are at the Entrada, guys. And this is why we needed an escort because the gate is locked and it is private. Yeah, so Gabby's family, whether it's uncles or dads or a whole family thing, own this farm. And it's going to be on the water, I believe, from what we understand. And there's a big glacier tour that people take on a boat here. And the glacier tour stops off here for a big barbecue lunch. So it's a private farm, but we will be having lunch with people that are on a tour to see glaciers around here. Okay. 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 We made it in, and so this is a 20 kilometer private road back into here. And I think we can kind of, we're overlooking the farmland here now. And also, 
there's a Laguna back there. <laughs> you guys have probably heard us call Vanna a little baby goat more than once. And one reason we call her baby goat is because she likes to climb on stuff she like jump, rocks yeah. and jump. And she hops. She has a little pounce like a little baby goat. But also she loves to eat paper. Especially receipts. We've come through no less than five gates. Look at that. And we have a little narrow passage. We can see a glacier up on the mountains. And <laughs> we would never have found this place on our own, obviously. We wouldn't have had a key to get in anyway. But we just continue to track around here. And this is like a beautiful back road. Woo! Talk about an adventure. We're doing everything we can do to keep up with Jorge. <laughs> We're trying. And Gabby. We're trying. No, he's driving her tail off. Oh, man, I didn't like me vlogging. But it is a bumpy, <laughs> dossy road. I'm glad we have a dually. We haven't had to lock in the four wheel drive yet. It's mainly rocking and rolling bumpy. Bumpity, bumpity, bump, bump, bump. Oh, look but look at this view right here guys we are right up along the water right here I mean we are right on the water's edge on this fjord we got a little steep dip de do little curb but we are skirting <laughs> Wow guys what an amazing little drive back in here thank you so much Gabby for inviting us back up here but we don't fall down <laughs> if you guys are ever wondering why our tires don't last last that long now you know <laughs> Beautiful Ooh. roads like this we've already had like two sets I think in uh, about 50,000 miles so <laughs> we're not exactly getting great mileage out of our tires but this is why so this is the start of the Perales farm. It was started by her grandmother, by Gabby's grandmother. And now it is Gabby's father and Gabby's brother and sister. So her two, her, her two, her aunt and uncle also farm this. And so this right here is like a winter hay, which is really difficult to grow here, but her uncle grows this. You'll see some bales up here uh, to feed the, the sheep and the wild stock during the winter time. But up here we are approaching the devil's throat. So I'm told the road is gonna get even prettier and there's gonna be a little narrow tight spell through here. So right. hold on, we're in for a surprise. It's supposed to get interesting through here. Look at this. Welcome to Estancia Perales. Uh, <laughs> Three lap wings just took off. We got a glacier right out in front of us. This, I believe, is where the ferries come in front of us. Right here is where the ferries come in and dock sometimes. And that's when they serve lunch to people who are going on longer glacier tours up into these fjords. The barbacoa is going. All right, uh, we're going back here to the grill. Mm, it smells so good. Look at this, guys. Wow. Wow. Hola. 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 Wow, look at this, guys. Florida, Estados Unidos. Pero mi español es muy malo. 
<risa> Muy malo. Eh, wow. Ay, eh, eh. <risa> Nuestro inglés también es muy malo. <risa> Cordero. Lam. Lam. Wow. Ahí entiende. <risa> wow, guys. Mm. I just had a piece of this meat right off the grill. Wait, it's still smoking. Delicioso. Wow. <laughs> All right, guys, here is the camp spot for the next day or two. Look at that turquoise blue glacier up there. Wow. Let's go get snow down by this grill. Look. Here, come look at, come down and look at that. <laughs> oh, look at this. Here, turn to me, Snow. <laughs> that is incredible, isn't it? It is, it is by far, not even close, the best lamb I've ever had. Wow. Hey, boss, look, you can throw there. Throw, so throw the... You can throw there, it's okay. Throw it? Uh -huh. You don't give it to... No, no, no. Okay. You can have it later. Later. No, let me go. No. Oh. No, she doesn't bother me. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. No, she's okay. so <laughs> so, so does Vanna. Vanna has a lot of hair. Oh, okay. So it's okay. We understand the hair. Is it okay? No, don't be sorry. Huh? She's just, he's, he's just it loving on me. Okay. Yes, it's a good thing. We had to get out because this is a little bit dangerous right here. He's got to jump on these logs to get across here. Look at him, he's rocking it. There he goes. He had to lock it in. We had to get out. Oh. All right, first try did not work out. So, uh, we back filled it up. Let's see, here we go. Easy peasy. All right, we're gonna walk across, but look at this beautiful view. Look at this glacier river dumping out right there. That is Torres del Paine up there. Look at this, dumping right in here into this lagoon. And as we come across over here, look at all these birds, all these geese and ducks, look at that. Every breath holds a moment 
Scared of the bridge. Lobo! Lobo, you can do it! So look at all the salads. Wow. Hola. <laughs> Beautiful place, guys. Nice to meet you. Mucho gusto. All right, round one. We have some delicious soup here, it looks like. And I got some Chilean vino. Yes. So, Good company. Incredible company. Thank you, guys. So it begins. All right, there's the masterpiece. Look at that. I think Kurt is in shock. Are you in shock? Wow, I'm already full. <laughs> That's that. No, we're gonna eat it. <laughs> no, look at that. All right. Um, there's charcoals down in there, so it's still heating and sizzling. Listen to that, guys. So Gabby has brought out two beers. Kurt is gonna have one now and one later. Patagonia is brewed around here. This is a lager. But this one is the special one. It's calafate, which is a berry. And it's blue, and it's about the size of a blueberry, but it's not a typical blueberry. And legend has it that once you have tried a calafate, you will return to Patagonia. So, Kurt, if you drink this, we're coming back. Oh, we may never leave. <laughs> Look at this, guys. I got to show this off because this is just... Amazing grill, salad, there's potatoes in there, there's chicken, there's lamb. Oh my, this is delicioso. We're gonna take a nap later. Yeah. <laughs> so Gabby packed us up some chicken to take to the kitties. You do not know how happy they're gonna be. <laughs> oh. 
get in my tummy. All right, what you got there, Kurt? Give it a try. Well, there's, yeah, it's like a dessert. A caramel looking something. Berries. Muy bueno, you got it good? <laughs> it's kind of like the flavoring inside tastes like creme brulee. Oh, and that's what it looked like. <laughs> yeah, it's like a creme brulee cream filling. It's so good. And what? this is like a light, light caramel. What's it called? What's the name of this dessert? <laughs> lemon oh, mousse. Lemon, mousse. lemon mousse. mousse. Lemon mousse. There you go. So... We brought some leftover meat out here for G. They, uh, Gabby bagged some up for G Money and he is chowing on it. I gotta hold him back from diving into the bag. Look at him. So he is loving this goat. So let me get him some more. Alright, I think G Money's not the only one that likes this little farm out here. What are you doing, Punky? I do have to say, this place is pretty as a picture. Over there on the beach of the water, up just in the grass, there's a bunch of sheep. And then we've got this beautiful fjord here, and then of course the rugged mountains and then these th thick snow caps up there and if you look at them closely they're blue and Torres del Pine is famous for its scenery and some of it is kind of what you can see right there behind us in terms of like the famous viewpoints and vistas and mountains but I gotta tell you it's beautiful everywhere here and uh, somehow we found ourselves right in the middle of it. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys!